Good morning and happy St David's Day. Oh, excuse me, sorry, I just had to dash downstairs because I was about to press the button and Graham printed something out. As we know from the past, that makes a nasty noise down, down the tubes. So I stopped, dashed down, delivered the printing and I'm back again. Right, good morning. Good morning, Barbara. Good morning, probably Margaret. Um, <laughs> Um, right, so this morning we are looking at John chapter 6 verses 41 to 51 when we get that far. Um, I have come to the conclusion that um, whoever wrote the revised common lectionary was um, a Welshman. Uh, because normally when you get a saint's day um, you you skip um, from the sequence of readings you're doing whatever that might be and you <laughs> Barbara, yes indeed um, you skip from um, the, the sequence you're doing to readings that are appropriate to the saint and then you go back the following day but no, not for St. David. They have managed to uh, pitch. Um, oh, yeah, no, that's fine, Bob. Uh, Brenda, that's fine. Do not worry. Of course you can. You can always come back and listen later if you have to leave in the middle or the phone rings or whatever. But yeah, for St. David's Day, we're, we're continuing with the sequence, but they've managed to do the Bread of Heaven reading for St David's Day. So there you go. My theory is that uh, whoever uh, was in charge of writing uh, the Revised Common Lectionary was probably a Welshman. There you go. Probably not true at all, but yeah, hey how. Right, so going to use the Common Worship um, Liturgy and you might get a rendition of a certain hymn as well. We'll see how it goes, see how the vocal cords hold out. So let's take a, a moment of calm and quiet, still our thoughts, or my thoughts at least, and focus on God's presence with us. the sound off on the big computer because that's going to irritate me. Right. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Hear our voice, O oh Lord, according to your faithful love, according to your judgment give us life. Blessed are you, God of compassion and mercy, to you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of our sin, your light breaks forth like the dawn, and your healing springs up for deliverance. As we rejoice in the gift of your saving help, sustain us with your bountiful spirit and open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. Lord, as we start this new week with you, help us to focus on your presence with us, to listen to your still small voice whispering in our souls and help us to sing your praises, Lord. And so as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, 
So may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. So, John 6, 41 to 51. Then the Jews began to complain about Jesus because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, his father and mother we know? How can he now say, I've come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be taught all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. I'm not overly surprised that uh, the Jews struggled to um, understand what it was that Jesus was saying. Um, it's not so much that you know they knew him as an earthly per person, as um, Joseph and Mary's son, um, as you know. There's that that quote, isn't there, about can anything good come from Nazareth? Um, and I guess the first thing to reflect on, therefore, is what is it that we are missing because we assume there is no good in it? Um, I'm reminded today of all days that uh, uh, our curate at university in Aberystwyth um, was a Nazarene. Um, and uh, I'll name check Monis Farah, um, fantastic Blake. He's now a Archdeacon in Wales, um, but uh, he wasn't what you would expect, either as a Nazarene or a Welshman, because he sort of adopted the country. Um, but through him, we uh, grew in love and faith in our university years and um, in more ways the one as well but that's another story um, but what are we missing what do we assume about people um, perhaps because of their background or what they look like or loads of other reasons and actually that's a real challenge to our uh, our faith uh, um, witness as people who uh, should see God in everyone and of course God was in Jesus um, far far more and it was very difficult for the Jews to get a, a mental grip on what it was that he was saying despite the fact that for them the image of um, bread from heaven should have been um, perhaps more uh, understandable than for anybody else. You know, they were the group for whom 
the manor had been so important. But uh, yeah, it's um, it's interesting, isn't it, that they didn't get it. They didn't get that this was the bread of life, just as they'd grumbled in the um, in the desert when they had the manor that it was boring having the same food every day um, and various other moans and groans um, it's very easy to to actually grumble about what it is that God has given us um, perhaps at this time more than at any other one of the things that people have uh, missed most certainly amongst the Christian community um, during these periods of lockdown has been the sharing of um, Eucharist of Holy Communion um, which is how we uh, celebrate this uh, word made flesh this bread of life and at some point this year hopefully it will be good to be able to celebrate that again but actually I do wonder if if this last year has taught us that um, sharing in the traditions of bread and wine isn't the main thing in some ways and I know some people will call me a philistine for saying it but actually the bread of heaven is god dwelling in us in jesus christ in a in a spiritual sense in the way we live our lives and showing that outside of the physical buildings of the church be it um, in person or online or any other way um and actually that is is how we see God at work in the world um, that way rather than um, dare I say it in a holy huddle over bread and wine so that's my contentious thoughts for this morning oh well never mind let's trust that God is speaking to us in all that we read in scripture, in all that we consider. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. You are the God of my salvation. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. In you I hope all the day long. O my God, in you I trust. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. So I'm going to turn to a time of prayer. And there are many things uh, which we probably need to hold before God, not because he doesn't know about them, because of course he does, but because he needs to know that we care. He needs to see the purpose, purposefulness of our prayers and we need to encourage each other by praying together. Lord, we give thanks for your living word. Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord. We pray that you feed us with what it is that we need to see and hear 
and understand and that we will look for that knowledge of you in unexpected places in people and contexts where perhaps we wouldn't expect it open our hearts and our minds Lord that we might have knowledge of your love through the power of your Holy Spirit Amen Lord we pray for all those in leadership leadership in our government in our churches and in the world may they act with humility searching for the right way forward listening and balancing up the different um, needs of the world with care and justice and love at the forefront of their hearts and minds and decisions we give thanks Lord for all those who have sacrificed much for us and for others um, it might be um, the NHS workers or care workers those who are coming in to help look after our loved ones our friends it might be teachers Lots of people, like, I don't know, a dustman, um, who are just helping to oil the hinges of life at the moment, despite the risk involved. We pray, Lord, that you will... strengthen, encourage and give rest to all those who day to day struggle with the workload that they are faced with. We pray Lord for wisdom and understanding as we start to make decisions about um, returning um, some of our services to church Lord how we do that in a way that includes as many as possible keeps people safe but doesn't become so much the be all and end all of everything that we forget to witness to the world with love and compassion for our neighbours seeking to bring healing and hope as we think of those themes of healing and hope we remember those amongst our fellowship and beyond who need to experience both in whatever the health difficulties are that they are experiencing at the moment and so we remember Chris and Pete and Jed and Doreen Sylvia Brian and Beryl Adrian John and Joan Jeremy John and Judy, 
Margaret and Norman, Ellen, Isabella, Marianne and Graham, others known to us by name, thinking of a lovely lady called Audrey, a member of the St Peter's congregation. We pray, Lord, that each might know your presence with them, that peace which passes all understanding. and trust in those who care for them with patience, wisdom and fortitude. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Almighty God, who called your servant David to be a faithful and wise steward of your mysteries for the people of Wales, in your mercy grant that following his purity of life and zeal for the gospel of Christ, we may with him receive the crown of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Trusting in the compassion of God, let's pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So, guide me, O thou great Redeemer, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me with thy powerful hand. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me now and evermore. Feed me now and evermore. I'm going to leave it at one verse because it's really noticeable how my breath isn't as good as it used to be. Before we're allowed to sing in church again, we're all going to have to practice at home because our, our singing breathing is all kaput. May God, our Redeemer, show us compassion and love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. So go well and God bless. And the sun's nearly out again.